first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you about me. And then um, I'm going to tell you about personal branding, define it for you, and explain to you why it's important. Um, then I'm going to give you five principles that will change your life, okay? Um, as it relates to job searching. And then we're going to have a little Q&A. Prior to starting here at Collin College, I was, let's back all the way back up to about 2002. I was, I was out of college um, in 2000 and didn't find a job until 2002. But at that time, it didn't matter. I mean, I was still young, you know, who cared? Staying at home with my parents, it didn't matter. Um, I ended up finding a job and I worked that job as an event coordinator for about eight years. As I was working that job, I determined that I did not want to uh, continue just selling people stuff. You know, I was doing basically selling and planning events, weddings, all that type of thing. And while that was valuable to people, I wanted to do something a little more um, meaningful, you know. So I started thinking about the idea of um, entertaining counseling or, or therapy or psychology or something. So fast forward to 2011, I took this gigantic leap of faith and quit that job. Good benefits, good money. I was in Memphis, by the way and quit that job so that I could complete my master's degree in counseling. Uh, when I did that, I got out of school in October of that year. That was January that I quit, October that I finished. And I'm just thinking, okay, yeah, I got my master's degree. It's on, you know? Somebody's gonna hire me like, like that because I'm great, you know? So, <laughs> so that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, it took about six months before I was able to get a job as an academic well, no, it was, a, it was a temp job. I got a temp job for a short while, and throughout that next year was just temp jobs, underemployment, things that were completely not related to my, my career field. And then in 2013, I finally got a job as an academic advisor, which still wasn't counseling, but it was closer to counseling than event planning, you know? Um, during this time, however, uh, working that job, I was miserable. I hated that job. Um, it started off okay, but because the school that I was working at back in Memphis um, wasn't that great, um, and they had a whole lot of transition going on, we were not, it was a very, very stressful situation. So I uh, ended up getting laid off from there, and then came the fun part, uh, trying to figure out what next, because now this time that I'm unemployed, it was not planned, it was not, um, Calculated, there was no money saved up or anything like that, and I wanted to move to Dallas, so it was just all over the place. Um, and I got a little concerned when I when I started seeing where I had to move out of my apartment and I had to um, make a whole lot of adjustments because things were just going financially crazy. Um, and to add to that, I was job seeking of course I think I may have I had I kept a uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet of how many places I had applied to I think I applied at that time that I moved here I had applied to like 400 companies Shh. I sent out 400 resumes cover letters whatever I could to whoever I sent as far as to Australia <laughs> trying to find anything and um, no I, I wasn't getting the callbacks that I wanted but then I started to think, okay, if I was a hiring manager, what would I be looking for? You know, I'm getting this stack of things. What, what can I do to stand out? You know, what would I be looking for? So I started thinking, maybe I need to stand out because I do have a background in marketing. So, you know, I'm like, let me think of my marketing terms. What do I need to do to stand out? And I started one simple thing. I created a heading for my resume and my cover letter, and it made it look uniform. And I was like, okay. So I started sending that out. I started getting callbacks. I don't know if everybody's not doing that, <laughs> you know, or what, but I started getting callbacks. And I was like, all right, so this is kind of cool. Um, I got so many callbacks here in Dallas that I had to um, come here for like two weeks at a time just to arrange all my callbacks in my first interviews. It like opened up a whole new world, just that one little piece. Um, and then I started kind of delving more into, well, what else would it take for me to get more, even notice more, and to get past the first interview and the phone call into the second interview. And that's when I started to 
do personal branding. I didn't know it was named for it. I just started doing it. You know what I'm saying? So it, is, it became very effective. Um, all the things I started to learn about it and eventually got me here before you now. Um, that whole process was about a year. Was about a year. So um, personal branding and why it is important. By definition, um, there are a bunch of gurus out there who have their thoughts and everything about personal branding and I, I found that um, their definitions were just outstanding so I didn't really have to create another one. Uh, one is, it's your unique promise of value. That's William Arruda, he's a personal branding. If you go to YouTube, type in his name, personal branding, you're gonna get so much information, so many facts, and we'll even talk about some of that um, going through this through this uh, presentation. But it's your unique promise of value, according to him. And then another guru says, the values, abilities, and actions that others associate with you. So there is a you piece and a them piece. The you piece is what do you, what's your value? What do you bring to the table? Um, and then how are others perceiving it? Sometimes there's a disconnect right there where you have all this value, but maybe you're not communicating it effectively or people are not grasping that, oh, that's what you do. I actually had a situation like that. Uh, even getting this job, in my interview at this job, I was sitting there with, uh, y'all may know Molly and um, Ann, I don't know. Um, but anyway, they were interviewing me and you know we're going through the standard interview questions and I'm answering them and all that stuff. And, and I, but before it was over, I was like, wait, wait, wait. I, I want y'all to know that. And I just went down this list of values that I could bring to the table. And I honestly believe that's what got me the job. I mean, because they were like, wow. And they started delving into that and kind of going more into that. And so I had done some, well, we're gonna get into that, but I had done some, um, spent some time understanding what exactly I brought to the table, but we'll get to that in a second. Mm -hmm. And apparently they associated that with me and thought it was valuable for, for you guys. So why is personal branding important? One, you have a brand already. You have a brand because basically you have a reputation. So whether that's good, bad, intended, or unintended, you do have a personal brand. Whether you're known as a hard worker, whether you're know, known as a complainer, whether you're known as a um, as a, a war reward or a you know messy person in the office, you have a brand. Well, because you have a brand, intentionally or unintentionally, you might as well manage it, right? You know, it's just it's letting it be out there and have no, it's just kind of this wildflower growing. You don't want that, you want to manage it. You want to get it to a point, you want to understand your brand and manage it in a way that it's working for you and that job seekers are looking for you. I have a friend right now who is working and um, she started off working in um, some company, I can't remember, in Memphis. She, because of how she carried herself and her reputation as an HR professional, got contacted on LinkedIn just by her profile alone. And now lives in Arizona making bukus and money, headed towards the top of the company. I think it's Pepsi she's working for. So, you know, that's, her saying nothing, just how she's presented herself and her reputation that has preceded her. So um, you gotta manage your brand to work it to your, to your advantage. Um, Cause you wanna make sure people perceive you properly. You don't want it out there just, you know, maybe someone says, oh, he's shy. We don't need anybody shy in this position. You might not be shy. You might just be, when you're in, in your zone working, you just not communicate with other people. And when you're out of your zone, you are a very lively person, you know? But if nobody, if you have been packaged that and shown that to people, you know, you can be misperceived all the time, okay? So that's another reason why this is of high importance. Peter Montoya has a book out called The Brand Call You. And one of his quotes is, great personal brands are spin free zones. Your brand must be built on the truth of who you are, what your strength is, and what you love about your work. It has to, the best personal brands have to be authentic. They have to be unique. They have to be true to who you are. Because you don't want to sell something about yourself that, you know, it's not there. Um, because then you end up, ultimately looking even worse than you did when you weren't managing your brand. So try not to think of personal brand as you are a product, so to speak. You are an entity, you are a source of value 
but we're not going to spin you to make you look like something you're not. Now, these five principles, five principles, if you want to write anything down, this will be the stuff to write down. The five principles that we're dealing with tonight, there are tons of principles in personal branding, but the five that I thought would help you get a good start, and you can go to YouTube and look up the rest of them, uh, is identity, design, strategy, marketing, and recourse. And we're going to talk about each one in detail. Identity. Your unique promise of service. Um, basically, you're answering the question, what do you do? Too often, we're so close to what we do, we don't even think about how it contributes to the big picture. For example, a friend of mine has that helps people who are hard to employ find jobs. So it could be people that have had um, prison time, be people who are fresh out of high school or out of college, help all sorts of people who are hard to employ. So I help them with their resumes, and some of them have job experience, some of them don't. And the number one most frustrating thing for me is when I ask them, what do you do? What did you do at so-and-so when you worked there? Uh, I, uh, I, I, I typed up this, or uh, I cleaned up that, or I, I, uh, you know, it's real, they don't really know, <laughs> they can tell you some of the details of what they did, but they don't really look at the bigger picture of how it contributes. So you have to make your resume say and everything about you say how you produce a certain result. That's what, when we're talking about your unique promise of value, we're talking about your results, what you've done and how it contributed to the bigger picture, okay? Think about your particular life experiences. It's not just about the work that you can do. It's not just about um, the years or the programs, because you know, again, that can that might switch over. But nobody has the same life experience you have. Nobody have worked on particular projects. Not not nobody, but not many people have worked on the same projects that you've worked on, or uh, created the same programs, or work with the same exact companies that you have, or received the awards that you have. When you talk about unique and different, think along those lines, your specific um, experiences. Also, uh, think about your per personality characteristics. If you have some type of personality characteristic that's a little outstanding, think on these things. You know, those are the type of things that um, set you apart. Don't be afraid to talk about those. A lot of times, especially, I can imagine with a very technical field like IT, finance and money, things like that, you gotta be really specific on so much. Mm -hmm. But bring some of your personality into your personal brand. And we're gonna talk about methods and ways to do that in the next part. But think about bringing your personality into it as well. Talk about your passion for what you do. You know, all of you have a, a, a storyline that led you to the job or the, that you're pursuing or the degree of certification that you're pursuing. Think about that. Those are the type of things that make you different. Talk about that in your interview. Uh, again, when I start, when I got into this job, I talked about that very thing. Yeah, I've been in the um, college arena and did all those things, but I, I actually took time to tell them, hey, I'm really passionate about this. I'm really passionate about helping people find jobs, and here's why. And yeah, you see it on my resume, but let me tell you about this story when I helped this one guy, you know, and how that changed his life. Those type of things. Go, don't be afraid to dig in, especially in your interview. All right, so the next part of this is design. It's all about the presentation, right? Uh, let's see. So the two aspects of design for personal brand in this workshop we're going to talk about are methods and uniformity, OK? Now, the method that you use to um, start to make your um, personal brand visible, visible and tangible to other people, specifically to your job, um, your hiring, your hiring manager, things like that. Um, I, I separate into two categories, your typical things, which is your resume, your cover letter, your CV, your LinkedIn account, your portfolio, and then those unique things that make it set you apart just a little bit the creative things, an interview video. Have any of you ever thought of doing that? 
um, an e-folio. We do a whole workshop, and the career coaches are very knowledgeable on, uh, on getting you connected to people who help you put together a really great e-folio. Um, a photo shoot for your LinkedIn account and for other places that you decide to use your, um, uh, show your face. Um, a website. Now, I, I heard one of the, um, one of the gurus say, I think it was William Aruda said, buy your do domain name, even if you are not going to use it. And uh, create a blog, you know, whatever you know about, and especially if it's related to the profession that you want to go into, blog about it. Um, so these are different ways, different methods that you can use to get your face, get your information out there. Um, that's not just the standard, okay, here's my cover letter, my resume. Not that that's not good, but you want, we're talking about standing out. We're talking about personal branding and setting you apart. Now, in that same vein, let's see, you want to make your methods, your, and by method, I'm talking about resume, your, your interview video blog, your cover letter, you want to make it uniform. And that's the next part. Uniformity makes your methods cohesive and memorable. But yeah, you see different symbols. You think of a place or a person or whatever. That's what we're doing here with you making your, um, all of your methods uniform. Just something that makes you stand out. That when they see that, oh yeah, I, I got something else from her. You know, because they get that big stack seen that before you know or somebody email me mm -hmm. a resume with that same symbol on is that the same girl you know you want to get yeah. them to to remember it's kind of draw put some dots together so i'm a big proponent of creating a logo like that or a header that's you know that's yours um and make it represent you you know make it personal to you you know some people are against using color on resumes i'm not i use a color resume um but i know there are career coaches who are like they said against it, so um, I said make it you, because that's what that's what they're hiring. They're not hiring a set of rules. They're hiring you. And if you're a colorful person, put blue on there. You know, do whatever works for you. Um, and then if it's not working now, if you start getting people say this is not professional, you know, you change it to gray or black or white, whatever. Um, but then once you get it set, once you get your logo, your heading, whatever set, put it on everything. If you create, or when you create your resume, put it there. You know, you create your website, um, put it there. Put it everywhere so every time they see that, they're gonna think of you just like you see that little swoop and think of Nike. They're gonna think of you. And that's what you wanna get. We, we talking about being memorable, right? Now, if you're not, now I know y'all are IT people, but I know you may or may not be graphics people, you know? So I found some resources, or I have some resources that I actually use myself as well. If you're having trouble coming up with colors, there's a website called colorcombos.com. I mean, then, if you don't want to have nothing to do with it, <laughs> you, and you just want to get it done while you focus on studying and family or whatever, fiber.com, have y'all heard of that before? And say you want somebody to design you a logo. And all these people, I will design you Wow. A logo for five dollars. And then of course, as you want other things done, they have other prices. But the other one is Canva. C A E N V A dot com. You can go on there. If you don't want to pay five dollars, you want to just do it yourself. Canva, like if you create you a professional Facebook page where you, you know, send people instead of maybe creating your website, um, a page where you can like, not a friend page, but a like page. Canva has everything already measured out for Facebook. Instagram, um, I think they maybe have a template for business cards. And what you do is you just pick the one you want. They got a ton of resources on there where you can just go in, plug in. You can find your logo on there and use that, you know, make that your thing. Um, most of their logos and stuff are free. Sometimes it's a, it's a dollar. But again, another resource for you to help start building your brand. Um, if you want to take the um, blogging route, uh, this one is called P O R T E N T Portent, I think, Portent.com. And then you go to Tools up here at the top and scroll down and go to Idea Generator. So if you're a blogger and you're trying to come up with stuff, interesting topics to blog about, it just gets you thinking about ideas you may not be thinking about. Uh, and then the last one, I'll just go ahead and go to this. 
is thumbtack.com. You can go to thumbtack, again, if you want someone else to do it for you, or if you want to um, become like an independent consultant and do whatever the work you do on your own, um, go on here to thumbtack, type in any profession, it asks you a list of questions um, about what you want, like the date or the time or your price, your budget, and then it, give, it sends your information to a list of people who provide what you want. Say you want a, somebody to build your website for you. Put in there, I need a website designer or developer or whatever. It's going to send your resume out to all the website developers in your area, and then they're going to send you quotes on what they'll do for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next part of this is move to the next phase, and that's strategy. Um, in strategy, I, I call this is the name that I came up with hardware, software, and options. There are some strategy hardware, there's strategy software, and there's strategy options. Um, because this is where you're going to map out your success. So now you have your resume done, you have your logo created or your heading or whatever. Um, you have all these things in place. Now you got to figure out how you're going to get it out to people. Okay, you can just go start handing out business cards or whatever. But no, we want to be more strategic because we're talking about building a brand. When Coca-Cola or whoever starts a new campaign, basically you're doing a personal marketing campaign. When they start a new campaign, they don't just, oh, I got it, and go give it to people. You know, they strategically move things around and, and have test markets and all these type of things so they can be successful in it, um, increase their likeliness of success. So that's what we're doing with this personal branding. So strategy is very important. The first thing, or one of the first things you should probably um, consider is what I just mentioned, a business card. Yeah, you may be working, you may not be working, you may have business cards associated with the company you work for, but a personal business card, something that when you're out networking or talking to people, you meet somebody at Walmart or at the restaurant, you get to talking, and you're like, hey, let's exchange information because you might be of value to them. Whatever you, that thing that you offer of value may be valuable to them. Um, have something to give them real quick. So oh, yeah. once you get it designed, send it over, visitprint.com, load it up, they have it to you in like less than a week. Yeah. Um, like, like I was saying earlier, you can use Canva to create it, the one I told y'all about earlier, and then send mm -hmm. it over. So the next part, um, when you're thinking about, which this is just really common sense, but I just want to keep it in there and just put it in there. A pen and notepad or a note-taking app. Um, it's common sense and whatnot, yeah. but I just wanted to, you know, when you start mapping out your strategy to go put your personal brand out there in the job market, make sure you have something to write on. It's like so basic that it's forgettable, you know what I'm saying? Next part is um, your calendar. Go ahead and before map out some dates and times that like for the next couple months that you can automatically know okay that's available and I can plug somebody into there. Uh, you don't want to uh, be in a meeting and, and somebody say oh I'd love to meet you I'd love to, to, to talk more about that with you and you're like um, okay I'll get back with you. It's like the sooner you can set that date that one-on-one -on -one date the better. Mm -hmm. So if you already have proactively have some dates already set aside in your calendar, you're ahead of the game, you know. Additionally, for your strategy hardware, <laughs> we're going to talk about dress for success, but not exactly what you're thinking. Not at the interview, not at the networking event, outside of all of that. Because again, we're talking about your personal brand. I, of all people, love to be casual. I mean, I really, really casual. I like to be casual, comfortable in clothes and everything. But because I'm aware that I'm trying to establish, I'm, I'm new to Dallas, and I'm trying to do something new in Dallas, not necessarily new, but new for me in Dallas. And I had to be like, wait a minute, let me make sure, you know, I'm being presentable. I never know when I'm gonna meet that person who's gonna, we're gonna get to talking. And I don't want them to say, oh, was that girl that was dressed, well, crazy you know it's all about your presentation and if you're unemployed for a long time I imagine it can be very um, tempting to kind of just you're not going to work every day you just kind of get comfortable going to the store you know whatever 
you never know. You never, you're always, I won't say always on. You're always, you, there's always a possibility that you will meet that person. So be mindful of your personal brand, even when you're not in um, interview or networking mode. So um, that's the type of things when I mentioned, when I say hardware, you want to get your clothes right, you want to get your, um, your resume, all the stuff that's tangible, you want to get that right. Um, and in order. Now we're talking about your software strategy. Don't think in terms of software like y'all know software, but intangibles. For instance, go online before you start all this networking. Google yourself. See what pops up. There could be like a serial killer with your same name. You want to figure out a way, do I need to include my middle initial? Also, research current events related to your area of expertise. So, so that you have something to talk about. When you're in these crowds and people are talking, you don't want to be looking like, uh, what? And they're talking about current events in cybersecurity, but you don't know anything about it. You know, go online, research these things, get, stay up to date, subscribe to some newsletters and things like that so that you'll be in the know um, when you're in these events. And it makes it much easier to network and to talk. Um, manage the privacy on your social media. Um, I heard a lot of people have their social media public. I won't say make your page private, but at least manage it so that you know what an employer will see uh, when they look at your social media. I know on Facebook, they have a, they used to have a feature on there where you could see how other people will, will view your page. I don't know if they still have that, okay. So, you know, again, just another way to help you manage your, your privacy so that you can put forth the image that you want to be seen. And again, I already talked about buying your, UR, your URL. All right, another um, strategy software that you want to be aware of is your script. What are you gonna talk about? Yeah, you can talk about current events and things like that, but the point is to get them focused on you and what you have to offer. So, have you all heard of the whole notion of an elevator speech or elevator? You got, you know, I'm about to blow your mind though. So you know how they got like the elevator speech that's like 30 seconds? An elevator pitch that precedes the speech. So the pitch versus the speech. The pitch is really like three seconds long. And it's just something to hit them hard and sell yourself with just a quick one line. And then the speech is telling your, your story. It could be anywhere from 10, 20, 30 seconds to a whole minute. And elevator speech is all about verbal ping pong. Do y'all get that? Isn't that great? Like, they say, what do you do? Instead of saying, well, I do da 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 you just give them the quick, like, mm -hmm. get, their, get their attention. They're like, really, what's that? And then you go into a little bit longer, and then if they ping pong it back to you, well, tell me more. Then you can go into your examples and you know, because now you've gotten their interest. You don't want to kind of overwhelm a person. A lot of times people say, like, you know, how you doing? Nobody really cares about <laughs> how you're doing. <laughs> so when you really start talking about it, they don't. But in a networking environment, people are looking for people to fill needs and to bring value to their company. You know, so with you all, when they say, what do you do? Have that catchy something um, ready and waiting for it. Um, for them so that they can just dig into whatever it is that you do. Your strategy hardware. How about you become an expert? Maybe everything you do is so so typical of your field that it's hard to get into that unique column. Blog, we talked about that already. Submit an article to an a, a, a industry journal or something like that. Um, study the current trends in your area of expertise and maybe even become a mentor. It might sound kind of weird, but when you're a mentor and you take it seriously, um, it, you begin to look at things differently because now you have people under you. When you mentor somebody, that helps you become a better expert at your area of expertise. So that's another way that you can gain some more expo exposure and experience outside of just, oh, I do this every day at my job. Um, also, become an apprentice because that's a wonderful way to network with people to get exposure. And we, we launched a mentoring program back in um, February, and that's a wonderful way to get you connected to other people. 
As an apprentice, you can be an intern, you can do some job shadowing. If you don't wanna to commit to like a long-term mentoring thing, you could just find somebody who does what you do and you know, get connected to them. Again, current trends in your uh, study of expertise. And um, be, uh, or get a mentor or, or a coach. All these people, um, all this can help you become uh, an apprentice, which can help you, again, strategically build you're trying to get your network ready for you to present your, your new personal brand. So is it all coming together? Is it making sense what I'm saying? Okay, all right. Now that we've got your software together, we've got your hardware together, I talked about earlier, I mentioned options is the third category for your um, strategy. We want to find you some marketing opportunities. If you were Coca-Cola, who would you call when you want to launch a new product? Well, you, the personal brand of you, who do you contact when you're looking to start putting yourself out there? Well, here are some of the standard ones. Networking events, social events, one-on-one -on -one meetings, um, general volunteer opportunities, industry-specific volunteer opportunities. Um, you can join a public speaking training group. I know some people are, um, public speaking is right along with death are at the top of the things people fear most. That is a proven statistic that people are deathly afraid of that and death. Um, but if you are, join Toastmasters. If you, have any of you heard of Toastmasters? Yes. Uh huh. So join Toastmasters if you're not comfortable with. But then those are the standard ones. Well, we're talking about being unique, right? Get your blog posted to an industry site. Get yourself on TV. If you, what you do, call the local morning show. Tell them you got some information, a community service type of thing. Um, yeah, so get yourself some exposure in the media. Teach a workshop. It takes nothing for you to gather a group of teenagers or something to teach them the advantages of, of not sharing too much information, you know, online. Um, all of this helps you have opportunities to get your name out there. You don't know who that teenager's parent might be, you know, where they might work and how you can network with them. Um, and become an independent consultant. You know, while you're in the transition for finding a job or moving into an a, a industry that you ha haven't had much experience in, become an independent consultant. Um, build websites for people or uh, go and check out their cyber security or their security in their uh, back, you know, whatever the technical terms are for you guys and that. Go do that for them. And um, you start to develop a new reputation or a reputation or you imagine the one that you have so now we get into marketing getting out and get connected you got your resume together you got your business card together you got all your stuff together you have uh, you've mapped out what you want to do you've researched events and all those things now follow through on it a lot of times we do all that planning and we still don't um, we don't follow through we're like okay all right I did it that's that and life starts happening and you don't you don't do anything uh with it well marketing the marketing piece of this is about getting out there and making it happen getting out there and getting connected when people know about you and they can go online and see you and they can kind of research you and you have everything so cohesively and uniformly put together when they meet you the conversation is really brief <laughs> you know what i'm saying so you don't have to be this gregarious talkative person, you just have to kind of back up what they've already researched, you know what I'm saying? We want to talk next about marketing goals. Um, a lot to be said here, but one, quality versus quantity. Do you want to go out and get your business card and give it to like 15 people tonight, or do you want to hone in on that one person who you feel some sort of connection with or who you, know, you just kind of, kind of naturally drawn to? Quality versus quantity. And when you're talking to the person or persons that you talk to, find out their needs. Don't just go in sales pitchy like, hey, I'm a networker who does this or I'm a cyber security person. You want to find out their needs because that's kind of going to shape the conversation. Again, it's about that ping pong. What they want, what you can deliver. What they want, what you can deliver. So find out their needs on the front end. And then, as they show interest, talk about yourself you know, as it relates to what they're talking about. And it may not be at first about necessarily the work that you do. It may be some other aspect of the two you connect on. Um, 
but hopefully the conversation can go into what off, uh, what you offer that's valuable to them and maybe the projects you worked on, some talking points. Then of course you wanna pass out your business cards. Um, and here's a little thing that I do. When you get somebody's card, immediately write down some little high points of what you guys talked about. So that when you're home and you're, you're going back to, to follow up, which we'll get to in a second, um, you can help them remember who you are. Um, finally, if it's possible, make one-on-one -on -one appointments. So what I typically do is say, oh yeah, you know, uh, it was great talking to you about this. Can we talk about it more on Monday? Give them an option, like go in with an option. Can we talk about it more on Monday at about noon? And then that's gonna get them to thinking, well, no, Monday's not good, maybe we could do Tuesday. Whereas if you say, hey, what are you doing Monday? Well, I'm a, I have a, you know, I'm going a big meeting or whatever, and then, the conversation's over, unless you want to go back in and say, well, what about Tuesday? Okay, well, what about Wednesday, you know? But if you go in with the date and the time, then they're going to reply, well, no, that's not good. We can do this instead. You see what I'm saying? So try to keep that in mind when you're talking to people. It's a whole uh, art to this. Uh, and it may take a minute to practice, but just keep that in mind. Uh, so you can make those one-on-one -on -one appointments, like right there on the spot if you can. And let's see, come up with natural exit phrases because sometimes the conversations just get kind of, you know, you're talking, you're going back and forth, and then it's like, all right, you know. And so, in advance, while you're um, doing your strategy and, you know, thinking about marketing and everything yourself, come up with natural exit phrases. Yeah, that was great to talk to you. So, uh, you know, I'll see you on Tuesday or whatever. All right, bye. And finally, recourse. After you've done all the work, you've gone out to the events, you've gone to meetup.com, you met with every cybersecurity person that there is in Dallas. You want to make sure you're following up with people. Before you follow up, make sure you review their information. So they give you this business card, it's got like all the key stuff that you want to know about them. Um, their website and everything, you can look up their company, see what they're about. And then, uh, and as you're looking at that, remind yourself, how, how can I add value to what they're already doing? So you don't want to go at them with something completely new unless the completely new adds value, you know? Um, and then email them within 24 hours. Email them. I've gone to networking events and people forget, you know? <laughs> they forget about you, unfortunately. But they can forget. And so the sooner you follow up and you, you keep that connection going in their mind, oh, that's that person I met last night, um, the better it will be for you. And then with all of that follow-up, Here's a quick little summary. Keep it short. Keep the email short. Uh, the subject line should be the event where you met. So if you met at some colleague's wedding, child's wedding, or if you met at the networking event at Richardson or whatever, put that in the subject line. And then um, mention what you talked about, et cetera, et cetera. And your whole point is to work to get an opportunity to um, schedule a one-on-one -on -one appointment with them as you build your network. You know, because that's what this is all about, getting you exposed to people to get you um, um, job offers. And finally, Q&A. Anybody got any questions?